welcome to My American Dream, a monthly program of Finlandia Foundation National. During this program series, we are interviewing Finnish entrepreneurs who have come to the U.S. chasing their American dream. Finlandia Foundation is a nonprofit philanthropic organization that was established in Pasadena, California in 1953 for the purpose of supporting and celebrating Finnish American heritage while maintaining ties to contemporary Finland. A major source of private funding for Finnish and Finnish American cultural activities, Finlandia Foundation awards grants and scholarships and sponsors a variety of programs, from concerts to book talks to webinars and online presentations like My American Dream. To finance the production of its programming, Finlandia Foundation relies on private donations. Please visit our website to find out how you can help. Welcome to this next episode of My American Dream. This is a very special one for you in that this is the first live session we're having since we started this program in the beginning of this year. And uh, what makes it even more special is that we're down here in Paso Robles visiting an old friend of ours who has deep Finnish roots that he will tell us all about. So with that, Kevin Jussila, at Kukula Winery. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be doing it. Yeah, it's a pleasure. We haven't, uh, we have spoken and texted, but we haven't seen each other for a few years. Yeah. And we can certainly blame, like everybody blames, the pandemic on something. So. Well, and you're moving to Austin, I guess. Yeah, huh? well, that, that, that would do it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, so hey, t tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, your, your first name, Kevin, says something, Yusila says some, much more to some of our audience. And so fill, fill us in. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Every once in a while, um, when uh, people ask me, how did I get a name being a Finnish kid? Well, no longer a kid, I guess, but mm. uh, being uh, born from Finnish parents, how did I get the name Kevin? But uh, my mom named all of the kids, all three of us, uh, with very whatever <coughs> anglicized names. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, And actually, I digress a bit, um, although I was born with the name Yosila, you might know this story, mm -hmm. when we became citizens. So I'm Canadian born. Yeah. I'm born in Sudbury, which is a Finnish enclave. And um, uh, we became citizens in the United States when I was 16. And um, it, it, with that process, my father um, decided to change his name from Otto Yomar Yussila to Otto, O-T-T-O, Johnson. So Kevin Yussila became a Kevin Johnson for a time, and I just hated it. Uh, so as I got older, and just before we had kids, I decided that I would, uh, and I had already decided this, but I decided I would formally change the name back to Yussila. So, so I have Good a, you. you know, I, I've returned to my Finnish roots with the Yussila name. I can't do a whole lot about the yeah. Kevin, I suppose, at this point. But, uh, <laughs> it was yeah. probably K or something. Yeah, or, yeah there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good try. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, so you, you grew up in Canada for, for the beginnings and then the whole family moved here. Right. So kind of a quick background. Uh, my father was born and, and raised in uh, Finland and uh, was born in Uriala. And I guess when he was probably about 12 or 13, I think he kind of moved out to, toward the, the Turku area. And um, then when he was in his early 20s, he jumped on a boat with one of his brothers. He was one of four kids, three brothers and a sister. Mm. Um, and he went out to Sudbury, which he knew of, and I guess knew there were people there um, mm. of Finnish descent, because it's a big Finnish community in Northern Ontario. And he met my mom and uh, they got married, had three kids, and uh, I was in the middle. And when we were about five, when I was about five, uh, my uh, dad, I guess his mission in life was really ultimately to move to, to the United States, the land mm, of opportunity, mm. he thought. And uh, so moved to Southern California. So, um, yeah. Uh, so but I still have obviously, you know, big connections both in Finland and Canada. I have a big family in both places. And in fact, I have a home. I guess I'm at Mekke's in, in Canada and uh, just south of Sudbury. So we spend mm. a lot of time up there. Cool. 
Cool. So when it comes to the American dream, this is you're really living your dad's American dream in that sense. Or yeah. Part of the, well, part of I it. like to think it's my yeah. dream, but yeah. I mean, you know, one of my wines is called Octo, named yeah. after my father, and uh, yeah. it was my, my way of really giving my dad a nod for you know uh, pursuing his American dream and and yeah. really enabling me to do something like this, which was uh, you know in retrospect pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I can tell you all. This is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but you didn't really start off with uh, tinkering with wines. No, no. Yeah, and actually, interestingly enough, just in, kind of in terms of you know what my parents did, uh, they were working class Finns. Mm -hmm. My mom, a Canadian Finn, but she grew up in again a Finnish enclave, so grew up very much in the Finnish culture uh, mm -hmm. in northern Ontario. My dad, of course, in Finland. Um, and my dad didn't even graduate from high school. He mm. did actually go to high school when he was an adult and we were kids uh, in Southern California. But, you know, he was a carpenter and mm. he became mm. ultimately relatively successful general contractor and developed a little in terms of houses and apartment buildings and things like that. Um, and my mom cleaned houses. So I mm. grew up in a very kind of working class uh, Finnish community, actually mm -hmm. with a lot of Finns uh, in Southern California. So we didn't have kind of the finer things in life. And uh, it's like, I suppose, um, uh, whatever, a random act, I guess, that that uh, I fell in love with wine. And, um, you know, when people ask me, how did I fall in love with wine? Uh, it's a really long story, which I won't mm -hmm. necessarily get into right now, but it's, um, on some level, it might have been because my father thought, you know, maybe periodically, and he voiced some disparaging perspectives on wine consumers who he thought were snobs. And yeah. I was kind of curious about that. Why are they snobs? So um, anyway, yeah. one, one thing led to another, and uh, his son became a snob and, yeah. in fact, started a winery. So <laughs> That's a good story. That's a good story. Did, did, or do you still remember, did you have any, any very specific sort of... Uh, Finnish ways of doing things, traditions, stuff like that in your home that that you would still remember or you might even have brought on to your own kids? Yeah, I mean, clearly the obvious things are, um, you know, Christmas time mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, kind of the very uh, traditional Finnish way of celebrating Christmas on Christmas Eve and... Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, typically, we would get together with a lot of Finnish families on Christmas Eve and celebrate, yeah. uh, uh, you know, our Finnish culture that way, and certainly Christmas that way. Um, Finnish food. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up on uh, what you know at the time, and even in retrospect, I thought was pretty disgusting: overcooked root vegetables and <laughs> and uh, you know, just really not good food. Uh, so my mom. Uh, was really big on the Finnish food for, mm. I've lost track, you know, probably into my early mid-teens. And we finally, I guess, rejected that and started eating, you know, steaks and burgers and pizzas. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, um, one of the obvious ones is, um, you know, I think it was quite typical for us to, as kids on a Friday night, get together with other Finnish families mm. uh, and have a sauna and kind of the mm. typical setup. You know, the mothers and kids would go in the sauna early and the fathers would go later. And as we got older, the boys would go with the, with the men and uh, that became a big yeah. uh, tradition. And to this day, my home here, mm. I have a wood burning sauna in the house mm. that we built here in Paso Robles and my guess I'm in Canada, of course, mm. has a wood burning sauna and it's on, yeah. on water and the sauna is lit every day. And uh, that's something that I've really, um, because we've done it so much, our kids just absolutely love that yeah, to this day. Yeah, so one yeah. of our boys was here um, a couple of times in the last few weeks visiting us, and every night he insisted on having the sauna lit. So yeah. uh, you know, sauna is definitely a very big kind of a finished tradition that we have in the house. Cool, cool. Yeah. One of the things that I always was really uh, uh, surprised and impressed with was the fact that you actually speak Finnish reasonably well. Well, but I don't speak Finnish well. I understand it better. But given that you didn't grow up there, even briefly, and so, so did, did your parents speak Finnish to you, or did you come well, up with this later yeah, on? Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you could tell by my Finnish that although the dialect is somewhat good, it's probably shifted about 60 years because it's, you mm -hmm. know, a, a Finnish that I learned when I was a baby. Yeah. Finnish is, is actually my first language, and so mm -hmm. I spoke Finnish until we left Canada, but I was five, and yeah. so my vocabulary was pretty limited. 
and my parents being working class mm -hmm. um, people, they didn't really think that it was wise to teach their kids two languages or multiple languages. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they had a rule when we moved to the United States that they no longer spoke Finnish to us. And of Damn. course they spoke, spoke Finnish with themselves. They spoke Finnish to all their friends and they had most of their friends were Finnish. Um, so um, it was something that I heard in the house daily. But you know, as, as a kid, especially as you kind of get into your adolescence, you start to, there's a, almost a stigma to, mm -hmm. to speaking, it's an embarrassment. Yep. And some of it is because you haven't used it, and so it's hard to kind of keep up, and others, uh, the other is just that um, it becomes uncomfortable because you, you're not supposed to speak it. Yeah. Uh, and it's a shame because I, you know, I love my Finnish heritage, I love the Finnish culture. Uh, I would love to be able to speak uh, Finnish more fluently. And you know, now that I'm in my early 60s, I'm realizing that that brain elasticity is kind of um, <laughs> no longer there. So it's gonna get difficult for me to really kind of pick it yeah. up, so. Tr trust me, you're doing much better than the average that have sort of similar circumstances. Sure. I get that. Yeah, I really yeah. work hard at it. I mean, I'm, I'm somebody who's mm. not embarrassed to try to speak it. I'm not embarrassed to make a mess of the language. Yeah. Um, I speak a fair bit of Spanish, and that's I'm self-taught in Spanish. I used to speak a touch of French, and I know because you're mm. far more fluent in French, I won't even dare speak to you in French. Uh, it's been many years, mm. but I... I'm not. I'm not afraid to try to speak a language, especially if I'm immersed in that culture. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, good. So that 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 probably shows one of the Finnish very traditional sides of you, which is the sisu, which is just you push through with stuff. Oh yeah. And you make you make things happen. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, you didn't have education in that, and I. Uh, from what I understand and what I heard, you didn't really have any education in this either. I mean, you, no, you're a banker, right, yeah. right? That's right, yeah. And, uh, and the banker rolling wine is, uh, is something that you don't see every day. So, you know, what the hell happened there? Well, you know, the question really is, how did I get into wine? And I think mm. I sort of alluded to in the beginning, there was this kind of a curiosity because my dad mm. had certain views of wine and wine consumption. But I'm just by nature a really curious person. And Paula, my wife, likes mm. to say that uh, I don't understand the meaning of a small hobby. Mm. Um, and so <laughs> when I get into something, I become really, really passionate about it. Uh, I'm kind of like that with photography. I, mm. I used to be a really serious photographer. Um, you know, I'm like that with cars. I built mm. cars as a kid and I love cars. I love mm. driving sports cars. Um, I love wine. Um, I love building, you know, my dad was a carpenter. I learned mm. to build when I was a kid and I built every house I've lived in. So I dive deep into things when I um, have an interest in them. And um, I used, used to, every once I still joke, you know, when people say, how'd you get into wine? And I, and I would say, well, I got into wine because um, I thought it would be cool to impress the girls I dated when I was yeah. a young man. Of course, I knew nothing about wine, so I would order wine. <laughs> but it was, it was just kind of a combination of things with respect to curiosity of wine, you know, you know probably getting hung up on status and those types of things as mm. a kid, uh, as a young adult. Um, but more... Um, um, just wanting to dig in and really understand uh, what's happening there. You know, my, uh, my mom grew up on a farm and I, I have this, this illusion, delusion, I should say that, you know, on a farm, uh, she grew up on a farm and maybe that kind of was in her DNA and it kind of, it, it became part of my DNA. Um, but uh, I loved, I just kind of gravitated to farming as a kid. And so I loved building, I loved farming. Um, so I did a lot of vegetable garden kind of stuff at my parents' house and flower gardens and all this kind of stuff. So it was kind of in me. And um, I think as I got older, um, uh, we've built every home that we've been in. And I always had this aspiration to do some kind of like a dream project. And yeah. so and the other thing is I was a, like a big runner and cyclist for many years. And one way to get my wife to um, ride with me, she wasn't going to run mm -hmm. with me, was to do it in a really cool venue, which was Vineyard Country. Mm -hmm. So all these things kind of came together over a period of years, yeah. you know, uh, cycling, cycling in Vineyard Country, touring tasting rooms, buying wine. Uh, we're big foodies. My wife is an amazing yeah. cook. And so it's food and wine. And, and, and our, in fact, our, my, my wine style is really that of finesse and elegance because I want to really be uh, having something that's complementary with food. So, yeah. you know, it's something that just kind of evolved. Um, you know, the passion got carried yeah. away. And so yeah. here's where so we're at. So here we are. Yeah. This, is, this is a work of passion, no question. Yeah. So, so for, for younger people, what, 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 do you have any specific 
things, messages, something that you would like to convey about passion, because, you know, you, uh, I knew from the first time we met that you are a passion-driven person. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I am a passion-driven sure. person. And uh, we have sort of laughed about that at times, that we, we dive into stuff that we have absolutely no clue of just because of that. And, but, what, what, what would you tell the younger generation, the, the, the young Finns who come here? So I'd say, first of all, uh, naivety will get you everywhere. Um, I think that um, sometimes, I mean, this, this might sound kind of contradictory because I think anything that you do, especially <laughs> as it relates to business, requires a lot of thought, a lot of planning, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of um, focus, uh, a lot of commitment. Um, but there's a certain level of... Um, uh, just don't think too much. If it turns you on, figure out how to make it work. Um, and and if you knew all the difficulties that you'd encounter in life, um, in your career, whatever your pursuits are, uh, that it was going to be difficult, you, you and most people would probably not do it. And so I do believe that naivety gets you everywhere. Um, but, you know, my dad used to tell me, and this I think is pretty typical of people that are working class, that your level of happiness in life is really directly correlated with how much money you make. And, you know, mm. I've done very well in my career, and we've obviously been mm. fortunate to be able to do stuff like this. Um, but interestingly enough, I, um, over time, realized I wasn't as happy as I expected that I would be. And I knew intuitively that making more money does not make you happier. Mm. Um, and so, uh, you know, I started noodling with the whole wine stuff, and uh, actually I didn't really, maybe just a quick segue on that. Mm. You know, I started, we built our first home in Topanga Canyon, the Southern mm. California area. It had this kind of a feel of Provence, and we had been traveling a fair bit to mm. France at that time in our lives before kids. Um, and uh, so it was, it was getting into wine. I was, um, uh, we had built our house. The place felt like Provence. I thought it'd be a cool place to make some wine. Yeah. We started actually, interestingly enough, making Bourgogne wines and some mm -hmm. Chardonnays mm -hmm. um, uh, that's influenced by our architect on the project uh, when we built the house. But ultimately, my real interest was in, in, in Rhone and Southern Rhone wines. Um, so I ultimately planted vines there. Um, and uh, so it was this, 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 um, uh, that was really the time in my life when I started to realize that um, you really need to pursue that which turns you on. And I remember one night in particular, uh, uh, we used to do these unveiling of our next vintage of yeah. wine in June. Um, and we would have, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 people over at the house. And I made a whopping 60 cases of production, which, by the way, was a commercial label already. Mm -hmm. I decided it's going to be a commercial, a bonded winery. And so it was always a fun night. And one night in particular, there was some guests leaving, and our house sat up high in Topanga Canyon, looked down at the ocean. You could see mm. Catalina through kind of the, the V of the canyon mm. from our house. And it was just one of those beautiful kind of epic uh, sunset evenings. And um, the, uh, the, the, the guest who was leaving made some comment about how beautiful it was. And I think I, I you know, had probably had a few glasses of wine mm. by then, certainly. And, you know, you start to to really kind of take off on, on the conversation. I said to him, you know, I've, I've uh, made more money than I ever thought possible growing mm. up. And on some way, in some ways, I'm, I'm kind of miserable. I mean, not about family or yeah. kids or career. Just, you know, I just wasn't really, I didn't really feel like Full. I was where I wanted, uh, fulfilled, yes, maybe yeah. the right word. And I said, but the crazy thing is I'm, I'm, I'm getting deep into this winemaking hobby um, and I'm doing nothing but throwing money down the drain mm -hmm. and it's crazy I, I absolutely love it you know there's something wrong with me why is it that I love this so much more and so I guess the the, the short answer to your your question is um, do that which uh, turns you on figure yeah. out what drives you in life and then figure out how to make money and that's what I've told my kids uh, and that's kind of what they pursue in their lives is yeah. uh, passion gets you everywhere yeah that's uh, that's exactly it. Yeah. So, uh, and anything else that you have uh, sort of shoveled over to your kids in terms of uh, finishness than 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 the you know 
passion is good, they must have some of your sisu. I don't think that it can be diluted. <laughs> Uh, my kids all have Sisu for sure. And in fact, interestingly enough, my daughter, who is our oldest, we have three kids and our daughter is 26 and uh, she's finishing a PhD in cell biology at Case Western. And um, when she applied for her undergrad, um, you know, the essays yeah. that they had to write, she wrote about the whole concept of Sisu and how it's informed her in her life, uh, which I thought was really cool. Um, you know, in terms of Finnish traditions, uh, you know, I wish I could say that the kids have a lot of Finnish traditions. Obviously, mm. they love sauna. You know, we got our guests at Mekki in Canada. They mm. absolutely love going there. They spend as much time as they can with us there. Um, uh, they don't speak the language because my mm. Finnish is, is poor. They know a few words and probably some choice words. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, they've been to Finland uh, with us as a family once. They enjoyed themselves. I don't mm. know that they have a real drive um, uh, you know, to, I would like to think that that becomes more important in their life, but their mom is, is German. Yeah. Uh, Paula is German. And so she grew up in a very heavy German culture. And so they're kind of, you know, yeah. split kind of cultures, a lot of ways, very similar as you know, Finns yeah. and, and Germans yeah. in terms yeah. of kind of culture and, and kind of uh, work ethic and, yeah. um, kind yeah. of fastidiousness and whatever. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So, and sausages. And sausages. Yeah, there you go. Well, maybe more sausages than yeah. Germany, but uh, yeah. yeah, the makkara certainly something we grew up with in Finland, I mean, yeah. in Canada and the United yeah. States. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. But hey, so uh, uh, picking on just one of the words in this, which is sisu, mm -hmm. one of your best wines and actually award-winning wine is mm -hmm. called sisu. That's right. Yeah. And so... Tell, tell us a little bit more about sort of the, the winery itself, what you do, what, what, what sort of is the driving. I mean, the, the name Kukkula is, is, is amazing. And, you know, you who haven't been here, you should come because this actually, Kevin's house sits on a Kukkula. And, and this whole thing is such a nice nature and, and, and the, the hills that you have here. And all of your wines have finished names or connotations. Yeah. And so tell yeah. us something well, about that. Well, I mean, that's on Kukkula land. So that's obviously where the Kukkula yeah. came from, or yeah. Kukkula, as the Finns would say. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. We, we spent about five months trying to figure out a name. I think we've mm. talked about this in the past. And initially, my, my, uh, uh, my interest was to come up with a Finnish name. And I just couldn't kind of find that which felt right. And we, mm. we kind of went through this period of a couple, three months of trying to figure out, you know, French names and phrases because, you know, we're working with Rhone yeah, varietals. Yeah. And um, and after a while, it started feeling contrived. So we went back to uh, kind of dig into the Finnish names. Uh, a gukul actually uh, was a word that my mom suggested. Um, and, you know, it's funny because I was hung up on things like Mekki. You know, yeah. but Mackie doesn't really look or sound mm. good. Mm. And mm. and so my mom just said, hey, how about kukkula? And I actually didn't know the word kukkula. Um, and I so immediately, of course, I wrote it down. And kukkula looks good, the graphics of it, especially the way yeah. we do it with a yeah. lowercase letter. And we yeah. did the three hills because that really looks like what our property uh, looks like. And so, you know, kukkula yeah. was born. And so uh, when we started kind of coming up with different blends, um, not immediately, but initially, we have our white wine Valia, we have Sisu, as you mentioned. Um, but over time, we've kind of migrated to more and more Finnish names. But Kukkula, in terms of who are we, is um, we are Rhone-centric, we're organic dry farmers. That means we irrigate nothing. We rely 100% on, on water, excuse yeah. me, on rainwater. rainwater. Um, and we do it the traditional way mm. that you would do in mm -hmm. France. Uh, you can't water in France, yeah. and we do the same. Uh, we have the ability to do it, although we're in kind of perpetual drought environment. We got heavy clay and porous rock, uh, and an abundance of porous rock, which are great mm. reservoirs for water. Um, and, you know, my first love of wines was really Southern Rhone wines. Mm. And um, so I guess it was only natural that eventually over a period of 20 plus years of enjoying wine and getting more and more serious about pursuing this, uh, that um, I would pursue kind of a Rhone project. So we moved to Paso Robles because Paso Robles was at that time, this is now 17 years ago, becoming known as a, a budding Rhone uh, wine region. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it has really become that. There's some battle mm -hmm. between whether it's Rhone or Bordeaux, but I think ultimately mm -hmm. it's really going to become known as more of a, of a Rhone, um, a yeah. significant Rhone producer uh, region in the, in the world. Um, so that's what we pursued. We're 100% estate grown. Um, that means we buy no fruit. Yeah. Uh, again, dry farm and organic. Uh, we only make blends. Every once in a while we'll do one off, you know, a Grenache mm. or a Syrah because we have mm. some left after our blending. 
um, but very boutique, 100% um, direct to consumer. Yeah. Um, other than Finland, we do sell our wine in Finland, yeah. um, uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, although we did roll out our wine in Finland uh, about nine months before the COVID um, uh, virus hit, so it's gotten off to a little bit of a, a, of rocky, a, start. a rocky start. <laughs> <laughs> All good things start yeah. in a rocky way. Yeah. Oh, and actually, yeah. so so to the Finnish names yeah. uh, really fast. So we've got seven reds, one white and a rosé. And today we've got uh, five wines, Valea, uh, Otto, Sisu, um, uh, Iso, and Gamos. Um, so only one white, but the others are all reds that are, yeah. of course, Finnish names. Um, uh, it's It's been fun coming up with names that say something mm. about us, say something about the wine. You know, Gamos is a great example. It's, you know, of course, the yeah. polar night. Um, and it's Petit Sirah driven, which is dark and inky. So we just thought it was yeah. kind of an appropriate name for, for that yeah, wine. Yeah, very good. So it's been fun yeah. to kind of name wines um, with some Finnish names. Um, uh, I don't know what I'm missing. What have I not no, said? No, you are not missing very much. I think that, that, you know, what is missing is for all of our people to come out here and taste Kevin's wines because they're fantastic. Thank you. The environment here is uh, perfect. Actually, your buildings and the structures here look much more Finnish than they do anything else because they are very modern, very, right. uh, you know, less is more. Right. Simplistic, beautiful, and... Uh, but kind of modern and organic at the same time, yes, right? Which is yes, very yes, kind of typical yes. of Finnish, Finnish architecture. Yeah, we yeah. actually um, uh, hired a Swedish architect. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't find a Finnish architect. Yeah. We were not necessarily we were yeah. looking for a Finnish yeah. architect, but we've yeah. really gravitated over the years. Um, I'm kind of a student of architecture mm. um, to modern architecture. So uh, yeah. when we built this place, I really wanted it to, wanted it to feel uh, very kind of Finnish uh, in its line. Yeah. And uh, uh, we really love the Finnish product. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think that I would like to finish this off with a kippis. Kippis for, for sure. For the kukula. Maybe we should do it this way with the kukula showing, huh? There you go. <laughs> and uh, I wish that you all come and visit Kevin. And thank you, Kevin, for your time. This You're welcome. Been very interesting. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.